So we're just going to draw the linear survey here now. So there's a few different things just to start off. When you're drawing this, first of all yourselves, make sure you use a light pencil, as light as you can. I'm using a 5H pencil because you're going to make mistakes, so it's easier to erase mistakes using a lighter pencil as opposed to a darker pencil. But for this video, I'm going to draw a dark, use a darker pencil so you can actually follow along. And you're going to use a scale ruler. A scale, you're drawing to scale at 1 is to 500. So for this example, I'm going to draw it on an A4 page, I don't have an A3 page to hand, but you will be drawing it on an A3 page at a scale as 1 is to 500. And then you will also need a compass and a pencil, so this is what we're going to use to get our lengths. So when you're measuring out our lengths, whatever the distance to the framework line is, just go to the scale. I said I have a scale ruler, but it's, it says 1 is to 50, but I'm going to use it for 1 is to 500 by just sticking on a 0 onto the end of all the 1 is to 50 numbers. So when you're measuring out the length, get the length of the framework line you need. So say, for example, if it's 40 meters, so put the pin down at the 40 meter mark, which is there, and then the pencil down at the zero mark. And now we have a scale length of 40 meters on the compass. And we're going to use that to get our lengths later on for the curves. First of all, we're going to start with our baseline. So always kind of mark the drawing, which is a north point. Or the north direction and then try and get your baseline as one of the lines kind of a corresponding to the north and um, you might have to look at your reference sketch for that um, but we'll just make sure when you're positioning your drawing that your position is center in the page so you might have to kind of do a quick check of what your overall width and height dimensions are and just make sure it fits in the page you don't want part of the drawing to be going off the page because you'll lose marks for that okay So now we're going to draw a line S6 to S4, so that's going to be a length of 48.52 meters. So again, I'm going to use the compass to get the length at the right scale and then draw the curve, so follow along. So we put the pen or the pin of the compass down onto the point S6. And this is why we're going to use a light pencil because we're going to draw a lot of curves that we're not going to need later on. So let's draw a curve roughly there. So we kind of know the point's going to be somewhere along this line. So we're going to use the intersection of lines to actually figure out the position of all our different stations. So the next one, in order to get that point where this is, we're going to use the diagonal line here. So S5 going down to S4. Again, my notes. It is 53.026 meters, so I'm just going to measure that on the ruler. There. So bring the pin of the compass down. Like this. And you see now our two curves have actually intersected. So it's the point of this intersection, which is this one here. This is our station four now. So we've used the compass. To get the scale length for this and the scale length for this and using the curves we're able to actually pinpoint exactly where this where that is so then we can actually just draw the lines together make sure your pencil is nice and sharp my one has just had a break in the nib so it's getting a bit blurry here now but make sure when you're doing it it's all nice and sharp so I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go up here, draw this line and this line using the curve procedure. So now I'm going to do S5 up to S3, which is going to be somewhere up here, which is 39.9 meters. So it's going to be here. Position the compass. It's going to be there. And then S4 to S3 is 47.59 meters. So it's approximately there. And again, we've got the intersection of the points now here. And that's where our station three is going to be. And now that we have all our stations, we can just join them all up.
again remember to have done this all in light pencil because this is just your rough framework at the start you're going to have to tie this up for before you submit it so now we have our outline and our diagonal check here so straightforward enough And the next thing you're going to do is actually just you can start to clean the process. Now we're going to draw all the objects. Well, I'm not going to draw them all. I'll do one example quickly, but we're going to draw all the little offsets. So you did it so for your trees and your footpaths. So before we do these, we're going to just use your rubber or your eraser just to get rid of all these curved lines because they're going to probably more than likely get in the way. And even you might have to remove the text for the stations at the moment if things are getting in the way. So again, I was using a darker pencil for this video, so it's kind of hard to rub things out. So make sure you're using your lighter pencil and it'll make things a bit easier. So next thing I'm gonna look at is we're gonna draw an offset for one of the trees. There was a tree position roughly here. So in the offset booking sheet, so it should be something looking like this. I'm gonna draw tree number six. So it had a chain length of 15.4. So it's from S6, 15.4 meters long. So if S6 here, we're going to go 15.4 meters long. And on my other booking sheet, the tree was, I think, about 11 meters out this way. So I'll just measure that along. And you can see what it was. So again, using the same scale. So it was 15.4. And this mark here, I'm just using for the where the tree is, but again, we don't want to show all the little offset marks on here. All we want to see is the trees, and we don't want to see the distance out. So and the distance down here was 11, so you don't need to draw the line. Just draw the center point of where the tree is going to be. So that's where our tree is. So then we can get rid of that. It's not really going out because my pencil is a bit darker, but... Okay, so this is the center point of our tree. So on your booking sheet, it'll actually tell you the thickness of the tree, the thickness of the barks of the girth of the tree. So I'm not sure what it is off the top of my head, but there is, I think Garrett should have covered in class basically how to get the exact size of the tree. So if you draw, if you, whatever the tree trunk is, is a factor of how big the actual coverage of the tree is. But it'll end up being something approximately for this one. You'll end up getting something looking like this. So, as you can see, it's kind of a nice circular tree there. My pencil isn't that good, and this compass isn't good, but you'll have your tree here, and then you'll have more trees all along here and everything. And then, once you've all that done, you can put in the things like the footpaths and the building, just using the offset distance. So again, just measure along the line on your booking sheet, and measure out the distance, and then use your information that you're provided. For this example here, this is an example of a finished drawing, which I think is up to a good standard. So we have our north face here. And we have the actual survey here, so we can see all the different trees. These are the two benches which we all sit on at the end of class when we're a bit tired. This is the footpath going into the car park, and this is the corner of the building. So this type of information you're going to have to produce. Now this is drawn at a, on A2 at scale 1 to 200, but you'll be doing that at a scale of 1 to 500 and an A3, so it'll be much smaller, so it'll probably be a bit more compact. That's why you make sure your pencil is nice and sharp so you can get all the nice fine details. Make sure it's all nice and neat. I don't want to be able to see any of the curves. And you think all I want to be able to see is the frameworks and the positions of all the details like the offsets. So any other kind of marks should be clean. So again, make sure you use a light pencil for that. And um, you have to produce a border and a type block for this as well. So there's in the handout I gave you, there's a, group, a brief description how to do that. And if there's any other questions, just let me know. Okay, good luck.